Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Rob Trek where I try to answer your questions from the comments sections of my videos and if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. All right I have three questions I'm going to get to today and I'm going to do the first one because it's pretty straightforward but then uh, I have two more. One is particularly important I think for everyone watching but uh, the easy one first. Um, Hi Rob I try to take rear sync flash on my Olympus EM1 Mark III but I don't think I can do it. Usually I do light painting photography in live comp and take long exposure around 8 seconds or maybe 8 minutes. Uh, I want flash, will flash before the end. I see Sony can do it, thanks. Okay. So basically what you want is rear sync flash and live comp and that's just not possible on the uh, EM1 Mark III or any of the Olympus cameras that have live comp. It's always going to fire at the beginning of the exposure for live comp for whatever reason rear sync is disabled uh so that's just the way it is now the only workaround i can think of is you know when you're doing your live comp right you're generally working in very dark light so you don't have to worry about overexposing the image right by leaving the shutter open in live comp so all you need to do is when you're done doing your light painting and things and then you want to fire your flash uh if you have like a normal flash that has a, a test button, uh, set the flash to manual mode, set the power to what you think you need, uh, maybe, you know, 1 64th power, 1 8th power, and then just push the test button to fire the flash when you're done with your light painting. And that's effectively the same thing as rear curtain sync. Uh, you're just adding the light at the end yourself via pushing a little test uh, fire button. So that's, that's the only workaround, so it can't be done automatically but if you're light painting and spending all that time anyway it's probably not a big deal just to push that little test button uh it's not something you can do with like say you know the little flm3 flash because it doesn't have a test button on it uh but you know most other flashes you should be able to do that all right the next question has a pretty quick answer as well uh rob how do you set all target points on position one and one point in position two Sorry for the question. I couldn't find a way to do it. Thanks. So uh, basically, I think what you're asking is about the uh, lever position one and two and then switching from like all points to small point or single point like I was doing for my bird and flight videos. And for whatever reason, I forgot to show how to do that exactly. So I'll just show you now. It's very simple. All right. So the first thing you need to do is just make sure that your function lever is set up properly in the menu. So let's go over to the operations menu and then go down to function lever settings. And then in here, you want to make sure that the function lever is set to mode 2 so that it switches to AF mode, AF target mode, and AF target point. And then uh, go down here and say function lever, power lever. Make sure this is set to FN so that the lever works as a function and not as a power on off switch. And that's it there in the menu. And then all you have to do is I'm going to put the lever in position 1. And then you go in and you change your focus point to what you want it to be. So let's say we want it to be all points here. Also check your uh, AF mode. So we're just going to select uh, CAF. And that's it. Now let's move the uh, lever to position 2. And let's say we want uh, a single point like this. And let's center it like that. And then also... Uh, yeah, we'll just leave this in SAF like that. So now when I go back to position one, you'll see that we're back to all points in CAF. If we go to position two, you'll see that we're in single point and SAF. And that's all there is to it. And then all the other settings that you want to save, you would just then save it to whatever C mode you want if you want to recall them later. All right, this last question here is from Burned Meyer, and uh, this, this is really important, actually, uh, if you care about these things, okay? Uh, but let me read the question. It says, I have a couple of questions regarding the settings and what information is saved to OI Share app or my PC using OM Workspace. I realize that when switching between settings, C1 to C4, not all settings are stored to the custom mode, like, for instance, my menu settings. That's correct. However... When saving and restoring settings to files, I found out that my menu settings are not saved when I save C1 and C4, but they are when I save latest settings. So what is the part of the settings C1 to C4 and the latest settings? 
and are there any settings not saved at all? So the question is, when you go to save settings, what is being saved when we save latest settings, right? When we select this checkbox, it's basically everything on the camera. For example, my menu. So all the custom things you set up in my menu, uh, th that's being saved to the camera. If I don't check this, I'm not going to get my custom menu back by reloading, right? So generally speaking, it's a good idea to save this. And then when you save it, uh, you can save them separately or save them together. Generally, saving them all together makes the most sense. All right, so basically what the latest settings is saving is all of the other modes on your camera. So we did C1 through C4, but it's also going to save your B, your M, your S, your A, and all of the settings that you had in the Super Control Panel for those settings, and, and a lot of the menu settings as well. Also the Custom My Menu, right? Uh, those things get saved, but there are some things that do not get saved in latest settings. And I haven't figured out quite the logic of what gets saved and what doesn't. But I'll give you an example. And I, I can't go through them all because there's probably three or four hundred menu settings here, right? Uh, but for example, in the um, uh, wrench tab, page three, monitor sound con and connection, monitor brightness gets saved. So when you save, let's say you change the monitor brightness to minus five, like I do time to time. Uh, when you recall it from the phone, it'll reset the monitor brightness back to minus five. Uh, however, things like eye sensor settings, you know, when you bring the camera up to your eye, does it switch to shooting mode or does it display what's on the live view? Because maybe you're in playback mode, right? That does not get saved to the phone as a latest setting. Another thing that does not get saved, but the auto switching doesn't get saved. If you change the auto switching, it doesn't get saved because maybe you don't want it to auto switch. You like to manually switch from EVF to live view. Another example is the HDMI output size. You know, you can have that set to 4K, but if you change it, uh, you can't recall it back from a phone, right? There's some examples. But what's really important here is things that do get saved that can make a difference. For example, uh, copyright information. It gets saved to your phone, right? So that, you know, even when you do a full reset on your camera, you know, through the menu, uh, your copyright information doesn't get erased. It stays on the camera even when you do a full reset. Now, there's, there's a back door to reset the camera back to factory defaults. But uh, when you do it through the menu, your copyright information doesn't get erased. It stays in there. And you can save the copyright information to your phone. However, and this is where I ran into a problem. I was looking at some files the other day, and I was like, why is the copyright information 2022? Because I know I changed it on this camera to be 2023. And that's because I loaded settings that I used from last year back onto the camera. Probably my, my real estate work stuff. Because uh, those settings don't, don't change, right? I probably loaded those settings into the camera, and those have the 2022 copyright information. And that's why my files, when I uploaded them or loaded them on my computer, the exit data said 2022. Another thing that gets saved that you might want to think about are the file names, right? Because you can customize the file name. Instead of getting some, some generic file name like P2022 something, uh, you can change it to say OM1D. That's what I do. I change the file names to be saved with the prefix of OM1D so that I know when I load the uh, files from my camera to my computer, I took those pictures with the OM1 uh, without having to open up the file and look at the exit data. I can just look at the file name, and I know those are my OMD files versus, you know, because I sometimes I take out multiple cameras at the same time. Maybe I have, uh, you know, I took my OMD and my EM5 out at the same time for an event. You know, you're doing the dual camera thing, right? Uh, it just makes it easy for me to know which camera took which picture by looking at the file name. Those get saved to your, your phone, and when you reload them, they get reloaded back up to your camera. But if you make any changes in your camera, let's say you have a different naming convention, you want to be careful because 
the previous naming convention that you used are still on your phone, so you need to update your phone first. Anyhow, I couldn't find any documentation that tells you exactly what gets saved and does not get saved when you use the latest settings options on your phone or on your computer. Uh, and the way I figured out those few is I went through about five pages of the menu settings here <laughs> before I kind of gave up. Uh, and I was only lucky I was able to find those few that I mentioned earlier about the HDMI output settings, the EVF settings. And there's just no logic to, to it. I, you know, like the card slot settings get saved, but the EVF settings do not. It, you know, these are kind of workflow things that are kind of important, right? Uh, copyright settings get saved, which is good, but then you got to remember to update your phone, uh, the settings on your phone to reflect that new copyright information going from 2022 to 2023, for example. Anyhow, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below because they help me to continue making videos like this for you and they are greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.